All right, what's going on today, YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite cyclist YouTube channel. This week, I'm showing you guys how to replace, repair, and readjust your one-piece bottom brackets. But before we get into today's video, if you are new to my channel, make sure you head down below, hit that subscribe button for me. If you already are subscribed, make sure you hit that bell icon next to that. That way you get notified every time I upload. Don't worry, don't miss any of this awesome cycling content we got on this channel. So today behind me, we got my little mini rocker here, which has a one piece bottom bracket and crank arms. So it's pretty simple to tell what bottom bracket and crank arms you have. If it is just all one solid piece of steel, you have one piece bottom bracket and a one piece crank set. If you have that, that's, this is the video for you. If you have cranks that bolt on separately, I have separate videos just for you of that same exact process with a three piece crank set and a sealed cartridge bottom bracket or a loose ball bearing bottom bracket. So go check those out if this is not the video for you. But today we're talking about a standard loose ball bearing bottom bracket here with a one piece crank. So we're gonna go ahead, get this guy swapped out. We're gonna get this guy pulled apart, regrease it all, shove it all back together and get it all readjusted so it feels good. Now, how do you tell if your bottom bracket might need to be readjusted? Number one thing you're gonna do is if you put your pedals at pretty much like at 12 and 12 and six, you can go ahead and grab onto your crank arms and they should be nice and sturdy. In my case, if I grab both of these guys, there is a small amount of play in there and I can actually see the crank arms moving. So you have a little bit of play in there. Some are far worse than others. In this case, not super bad. They do have some play. You can see it kind of a little bit right there, but that means you need to readjust there at the bare minimum. In my case, I have no idea the history on this bike. I have no idea if there's even grease inside of there. So we're gonna take this whole thing apart, show you what's all inside so you know what you're looking at, and then we'll get it all reassembled, re-greased, and all back together for you. So let's get a little closer to the bike. Let's start working on this guy. All right, so the non-drive side of the bike is the side you're mainly gonna be working on when you work on these bottom brackets. As you can tell right here, you have your lock nut right here and your adjuster ring kind of behind there. So first thing we gotta do though is get this pedal off the non-drive side. And that's so we can actually slide the crank arms through once we have it all the way off. So we're gonna go ahead, take our pedal off of this side. Should be pretty easy because we just put these guys on and just put brand new grease in there to make sure that these come on and off super easy every single time. From there, what you're gonna need, you're gonna need a big old adjustable wrench here. And in this case, this is a 12 inch adjustable wrench. I believe a 10 would work fine. And really this is to get this big old nut right there. So with this nut, it is going to be reverse rotation. So lefty tighty, righty loosey. So backwards. So we're gonna go ahead and get on there. We're gonna hold our crank arm here. There we go, lefty tighty, righty loosey. So it is backwards on the lock nut. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull that guy off. There should be a little spacer behind that guy. Let's go ahead and pull that guy off too. So you got a nut and the spacer there. Put those off to the side. And then from here, sure, there are specific tools you can use with this guy. I don't use them. We're gonna use just a regular old flathead screwdriver. And again, gotta go the right way. Same thing, reverse, reverse clock, anti-clockwise, reverse clockwise, whatever you wanna call it. So you just gotta unscrew that guy there. Sometimes they're tighter than others. So you might need a screwdriver just to pop in that little notch right there, just to push it down. And we'll use it when we tighten it up for sure. And we just gotta unscrew that guy all the way. There we go. And once that's unscrewed, you can see right there, it's pretty much like the race your bearings will ride in. So we got that guy removed. Let's get that guy off to the side too. And from there, your cranks should just pop right out. If they don't, you can pull your bearings out and I'm glad I'm looking at this. There's not that much grease on there. So there's the one set of bearings right there from the one side. We stuck on the chain, we're stuck on the chain. That's what's going on. All right, so we're gonna put our chain out of the way here. There we are, set that on the bottom bracket shell. Let's try it this way. Aha, there we go. All right, there we go. Got the other side of our crank arms all off. And as you can tell, that is just one solid piece. There's the pedal we removed. There's your other pedal. And there's your crank arm with your gear attached. So, very simple, not much to it, honestly. And there's your other bearing right there. And that thing is kind of nasty looking. So we're gonna make sure to get this all cleaned up. Let's go over to the workbench. Let's take a look at what all we got here. So you can see all the pieces, get them cleaned up, get them re-greased, and we'll start putting this guy back together. So one thing you do wanna make sure you do over on the bike before, while we're getting everything cleaned up, is you wanna make sure to wipe the surfaces, these cups where the bearings actually sit, clean. That way you get any dirt, any old grease out of there. So we're not just gonna contaminate the new grease we put on our bearings. So there's one side all set. And 
there's our other side. And there really was not that much grease on those. So I'm glad we're pulling those apart. Here we go. So that is all set, all cleaned up, ready to go. And let's go over to the bench and we'll get those all cleaned up as well. Okay, so over at the workbench now, let's go ahead and get this guy all cleaned up. So we got the crank arms all detached here. Let's go ahead and we're gonna wipe down the race and the shaft on this one. Now we'll wipe down the threads as well. Get our actual crank set all clean. Get that guy all set there. There we are. Get that one all set. And then from there, we got our two bearings there. We're gonna go ahead and clean up the other race on the other side first. Get this guy all cleaned up here. And yeah, you could use a degreaser if you want. Most of the time I never have a, that big of an issue with the grease just wiping right off. Every time I've done this, it's been pretty old. So I just go ahead and wipe the grease right off of here. Make sure they are nice and clean. And we're gonna go ahead and wipe the threads off too. So we're gonna definitely grease the threads up to make sure that's all working like it should too. So got that all set. We're gonna wipe off our lock ring here. So that's all clean as well as our little locking spacer and then from there we gotta go ahead and work start degreasing our bearings so let's see how bad this is so in this case yeah you can see just wiping that off pulls all that grease off no issue at all so get this all wiped off here and this is a great time to inspect your bearing cage here. So what you'll find sometimes is either missing a bearing or one of these little cage pieces here is actually bent and is not letting the bearings stay where they're supposed to. So this is a great time just to inspect those and then of course you can replace it if you need to. In our case, so far, at least on this side, everything's looking great. Make sure all the bearings move nice and freely because they all should roll. If they don't, you probably got some trapped grease in there. So once we're done with that, everything here is all cleaned up. It's a super simple process. So your first bearing is gonna go right there. Then your other bearing is gonna go right in the same spot, just on the opposite side, so just like so. From there, you have your adjuster ring right here, which gets screwed on. Then your lock, then your spacer here, and then the nut on the very end. So very simple to reassemble. But once we have what pattern and what places they're gonna go in, you're all set to start greasing stuff up. And really all we're gonna grease is going to be our bearings and then the threads on the actual crank set. So right here, these threads where your adjuster and your lock nut are gonna go on. First bearing here. So in my case, I like using a brush here. Just helps you get kind of nice and deep into all the cracks there. We're gonna go ahead and grease this one side up and then we're gonna go ahead and grease up the back and try and jam some grease around the back side of the bearings. Get that all greased up there, and then we'll switch around, and we'll hit the other side the same way. So all greased up, as you can tell, everything is all greased, all the bearings are greased up, all set. And then from there, we just go ahead and slide that guy right on our crank set, just like that. All right, so we got that guy all set, and then we just gotta go ahead and do our other bearing. Got that side all greased up. Let's go ahead and move over to the bike, and we'll get this all thrown together. All right, it's so back over the bikes. So we got our crank set here with our bearing still on there. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, slip that, make sure your chain is sitting up on the bottom bracket shell. There we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna slip our crank set right through here. There we are. Right, make sure your chain's not in the way. There we go. All right, and we'll get that guy set in place. And then we just go ahead and grab our other bearing right here. And we're gonna slip that right into place as well, just like so. So from there, you got your both your bearings in place, crank sets in place, chain needs to stay the heck out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and throw our adjuster nut on here. And we're going to tighten that up. And remember it is anti-clockwise, counterclockwise reverse threaded, whatever you want to call it. And you can just thread this on by hand. It shouldn't be super difficult to turn. Should be pretty simple to get this guy all the way in there. And this is actually what's gonna adjust the tension on your bearings. So you wanna make sure this guy is all the way up against your bearings and is sitting nicely against your bearing on this side. So that's one thing you wanna make sure you do is make sure your crank set is actually spinning, sitting square with the frame. That way you can get the proper tightness on everything. So you can see it's already a whole lot better than it was. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our flat head here and we're just gonna give this a little bit of a push. We're gonna do, give it a little bit more of a turn. That 
way that feels good. And what you're doing, you're feeling, make sure it turns freely. You're looking to make sure it turns freely and that when you grab this and grab both sides like we did at the beginning, that there isn't a bunch of play. And that's actually feeling really good. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little, see if I can give it a little bit more of a turn. There we go, it feels solid right there. Then once you have that, your adjuster on, grab your washer here. Now notice the washer has a little notch right at the top there. So that notch is made to fit in this little notch on your crank arm. So slide that in there, slide the notch right where it needs to be, and then we'll get the nut. And a lot of times you can tell one side's flat and one side's kind of curved. Flat side is what's gonna go against the bottom bracket. And get that guy on there. And again, all this you should be able to turn and screw on pretty freely by hand. So if it binds up, back off, try again. You don't want to strip this out. So there we go. So got our lock nut on there. And we're going to go ahead, grab our big wrench again, and we're going to tighten this lock nut down. So you'll notice now that I have everything tightened down, these cranks are pretty tight on here. Like they do not spin freely. Like right now, it should be pulling pretty hard down. It should be pre pulling pretty hard on itself down and it's not doing that. So you want your crank set to be loose enough that you can spin it freely. If you can't spin it freely, it's too tight on the bearings. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead, loosen the lock nut off just a little bit. And it's still a little tight. See if we can loosen it just a hair more. Oh okay, guys, so we are a little too tight on our adjuster here. So we adjusted a little too tight. So what we gotta do is we gotta just get our screwdriver and we gotta back that adjuster off, not that much, just a little bit off. And we'll tighten this guy back up. So as you tighten this lock nut, it's also putting preload on there too. So it's also adjusting how tight your bottom bracket is together. So you kinda have to find a happy median. I'm gonna call that actually solid in my case and it should break in that new grease and it should feel nice and solid afterwards. That feels good if we grab both arms and try and rock it. it feels nice and solid and that is gonna be set for our adjustment. From there, we just gotta throw our pedal back on there and we are set to go. All right, so there we go. Bottom bracket completely disassembled, re-greased, reassembled and readjusted, ready to go. And I think this mini rocker is set to go too. Probably the next video you see with this bike, we're gonna be riding it and it's gonna be a Pretty entertaining video, I think. So, hopefully you guys are able to learn something from this video, or at least found it entertaining. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Appreciate the support. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Love talking to you guys. Love answering any questions you guys have. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching today.